Hey guys, I have some wonderful news to share with you. Um, I just received my TOEFL score literally not even an hour ago and this is my score. Yes, it's not perfect, but considering I only had a week to prepare and that I got 30 out of 30 in both speaking and writing, I would say I'm pleasantly surprised. If you also want to ace your test, and hopefully do it in a time crunch. I am here to help you all, okay? So buckle up and take all your notes. For context, why am I even taking this test to begin with uh, if I'm not attending a university? I need it as a certificate of my English skills. And because I'm such a lazy person, I didn't want to spend too much time preparing. I only gave myself a week, which in retrospect is a crappy decision because I still procrastinated all the way till like the weekend prior. Literally Friday, Saturday, Sunday were the only days that I was actually studying for the test. And I don't recommend you doing that. I say definitely give yourself at least two weeks. Like I would have given myself two weeks. Um, but then again, I just wanted to get this over with. Because of the time crunch, I only practice my speaking and writing, which in the past has been more difficult and challenging for me um, but this time around it worked out because I was so just like horse blinders on so hyper fixated on my language output that it even outdid my reading and listening and then strategy number one is also related to my context which is you have to have a solid base knowledge okay you have to have a solid foundation and grammar solid foundation and pronunciation and the same thing goes for vocabulary you have to have a decent amount of vocabulary but basically strategy number one is know your shit strategy number two is know your weak points so for me ostensibly writing and speaking are my weak points but they're not really really my weak points it's just like in the past i've scored lower in those sections um so this time around i really wanted to prioritize my output right and for other people this weak point might not necessarily be like a particular section you know it could be a pronunciation that translates into every nook and cranny of the test like your pronunciation has to do with your listening your pronunciation has to, has to do with your speaking it's not just one section but for me obviously i my weak points is that i do i mean this is the first time around that I'm doing the TOEFL home test. So I have no idea if the types of questions have changed. Like I needed to know the timing of things to pace myself. So that's, that's my strategy number two. Know your weak points and then just, just hone in on that one weak point. Uh, let's talk about writing. There's one integrated task where you listen to a lecture you read an article and then you have to write i guess the difference and the similarities between the lecture and the article you have to integrate both materials and then another independent task so two tasks in total one integrated one independent independent task to me is a lot easier because you're just given a prompt and then the world is yours okay you can just write your response to it. You don't have to read an article. You don't have to take notes. It's basically go, 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 go. But you do have to write more. And then independent task, as long as your logic is pretty clear, one paragraph is dedicated to intro, one paragraph is dedicated to your point one, and then reason one, and then detail one. And then same goes for another two paragraphs, just like that. And then one last paragraph, is conclusion essentially you have to follow uh, a template and i'll i'll put all my templates all my um guidebooks in the description below that's all i gotta say about it if you're in a time crunch definitely focus your effort on integrated writing because like i said there's an, a lecture and a, write, a reading material and you have to take notes and taking notes i kid you not is like 50% of it, if not more. Knowing how to take notes, how to take efficient notes, well, not losing information, not losing crucial information is the key to everything. It's the key to better listening. It's the key to better speaking. It's the key to 
um, that are writing scores. And then some tips when it comes to speaking. Uh, I already mentioned it before. Practice taking notes in a time crunch. So I literally separated my speaking into different portions. So the, th the first thing I did was I timed myself taking notes from listening to a lecture. I timed myself taking notes from reading an article or a paragraph just so I can get used to being timed because that brings up anxiety in and of itself, okay? At this point, you're not trying to put out information. You're just trying to retain information while being on this high anxiety state. I think this is true for everybody. Like, it doesn't matter how proficient and fluent you are in a particular language. As soon as someone starts timing you, whether it's timing your notes or timing your speaking, you get anxious. So I had to expose myself to that. Like I would literally set an alarm for 45 seconds or 15 seconds and just getting used the clock um, is like 50% of the work. And another tip kind of along the same lines is timing my speaking. I would literally read um, a student's response from one of the guidebooks and timing myself speak just so I can get an idea of what they're looking for like what speaking consistently and not too quick not too slow in 45 seconds sound like on on a recorder on a recording app practice speaking like practice reading something out loud in 45 seconds and mentally gauge how many sentences you could realistically speak in 45 seconds you need to get used to being monitored and then tip number three is practice speaking from your notes so in my practice i noticed that the introduction of my speech the first sentence i ever utter is the most important one and if i could if i have time to write out a full sentence on my on my board on my whiteboard i would because that's usually why i mess up in my practice if i don't write out a full sentence i would overthink it i make sure to always write out a full sentence in my notes and then everything else i pace myself like i would just write a keyword and then before i speak the next sentence i'm already thinking of how to construct the next sentence and another point this is like strategy number four when it comes to speaking is I would use words and expressions that I'm absolutely comfortable with. When I'm writing, I write it to impress. I use fancy words, fancy words that I have a firmer grasp on. Like I don't use words that I'm not familiar with. But in speaking, I try to use simpler words. Like when I'm speaking, I basically do the opposite. My point is not to impress. My point is to convey every single thing they're expecting me to say because that's that's what they're looking for anyway like the fact that i got 30 speaking just regularly is a testament to that like you don't want to impress when you're speaking save it for writing now i want to talk about the actual types of questions um in speaking and what specific ones have been difficult for me or more challenging. So the easiest is type A or type one, which is an open-ended one. So this is kind of like the independent uh, writing task where you're given a prompt, you're given a question, and you're asked to speak about your opinion. That's probably where I spend the least amount of time on because I already do this, you know, for a living. I speak about my opinions on something. So that's not what I struggle with the most. The only thing is I have to pace myself uh, because I'm only given 45 seconds to speak and then even less time to prepare. Only 15 seconds to prepare and 45 seconds to speak. So in my practice, I make sure to come up with my points very fast. I really did spend a lot of time timing my, my response. Type two and type three are both integrated tasks where you have to listen to a lecture or a notice and then you have to read something and then you have to um, give a response. So those two are like the most difficult. The most useful strategies that have panned out really well for me is practice taking notes, practice timing myself and do it over and over and over again. I would only do one type of speaking at a time. When I only have like three days to prepare, 
my day one's morning is just type two questions and then afternoon is type three questions and then the second day is like type four questions so i can get used to the formula whereas if you practice the speaking portion like chronologically from type one to type four it might be just as good but for me i needed that extra repetition to get used to the pace to get used to uh writing that particular note one final tip when it comes to speaking is i would write down how many sentences i would speak in 45 seconds and then I would dissect um, two sentences. I would dissect the sentences into, okay, here's two for intro, here's two for point number one, here's two for point number two, and then here's how many left for the summary for the conclusion. I engineer that shit so that I'm not hoping to squeezing extra amount of time. I know when approximately I could stop and it's better to stop sooner I know it sounds counterintuitive because like y you want to speak more but it's actually the reverse you want to stop yourself when you're still ready and confident you don't want to like be caught off when you're still speaking they want to hear you sound eloquent and confident and so if you give yourself more time, if you stop yourself sooner than you expected, it's better. Now I want to talk about the rest of the test um, and what my experience was like. This is my first time taking the home test. Understand like when you're taking a test at home, in order for them to make sure that you're not cheating, someone is watching you from, from a computer, from an app. So it was a little nerve wracking, but luckily it all worked out uh it's just that you want to make sure you get a big enough whiteboard for your test like your notes portion i initially got this one which i kid you not literally the the day before the test i went ahead and got a bigger one see this is like twice the size but in my opinion this is still not big enough um i was almost running out of space and because i guess the quality isn't so good the eraser didn't work so good towards the end of it and so luckily i had a 10 minute break between my listening and writing or speaking portion so i had the time to like forcibly um erase everything so yeah get a good quality whiteboard and practice taking notes on your whiteboard oh you have to take your test in in a bedroom in an isolated place make sure no one comes in like make sure uh you're in the room by yourself and like hydrate but don't hydrate too much because you're only given 10 minutes but you already know that this is like standard territory when it comes to taking tests in general give yourself like four to five hours of the day like don't do anything else in that day and you'll be good don't take it too early don't take it too late i'd say take it at 1 p.m that's the most ideal time that's basically everything uh let me know in the comments what else you want to know um what your TOEFL test experience is like or especially if you took the home test like i did whether or not you would do it again but i'm really happy with my result i'm really happy with my score 116 are you kidding usually people don't get full scores in speaking or writing that's all